Well, good evening, ladies. I hope you're having fun. You having fun yet? Well, this has been a great night. Again, my name is Brian Lemieux, and we absolutely love putting on Women's Comedy Night out each and every year. In fact, it's one of my absolute favorite weeks of the year because the only time I'm allowed to dance in public. <laughs> so it's really nice. In fact, uh, that little piggy skit where I got to be the monk with moves, that was, that was one of my favorites. I got to do that little backspin deal. Well, for me, that takes me all the way back to third grade when my number one career goal was to become Michael Jackson. And I had the black parachute pants, and I had the Michael Jackson shirt, and one of my friends had the, the white glove, and we'd share it. And then we'd, we'd walk down the hallway of our elementary school, you know, like we were in the you know, MTV music video, Beat It. Beat it. All the Go, girl. I mean, we were expert breakdancers. We really were. We, instead of doing kickball, we'd get big pieces of cardboard and we'd do our, you know, our breakdancing moves. And, you know, I'm pretty good at it. So it was fun then. And, well, uh, my, my daughter, she's been taking some dance lessons too. We thought maybe she might have the gift of dancing that, you know, maybe I passed it on to her. So we thought we'd try it out. And, no, actually, it's been a great time for her to learn a little bit about dance and to be out of the house a little bit. And uh, what we didn't realize, though, was it would begin a 24-hour, 12-month-long dance marathon. <laughs> if you've had a girl in dance, you know that. She's, she's just dancing all the time here. Just all the time she's dancing. And, you know, she gets up in the morning, and it's the Frosted Flakes dance, and she's just dancing. <laughs> and then, you know, when it's uh, time to brush your teeth, you, she brush your teeth dance. And then, and then when it's, uh, you know, the final act of the morning, when it's, uh, we're already five minutes late for school, and Dad just wants you to put your shoes and coat on dance. And, you know, she's just dancing, dancing. I'm like, okay, Chloe, no more dancing, no more dancing. We actually, uh, she's been a little bit into Irish dancing lately. We took her to uh, river dance when it was here at MSU, and so she spends a lot of time uh, river dancing at home. And so she's, you know, kind of in her own world, just river dancing all over. And you just never know when she's going to stop. And, you know, she could go for like 30 minutes straight, just, just river dancing, and, until we say, uh, Chloe, it's time to get out of the shower. <laughs> she, she likes to river dance in the shower. She's a fun girl. Uh, my, my son, he's a fun boy too. He's a two-year-old, and he loves anything with wheels. Loves wheels. He's a boy's boy. And he does sort of a two-year-old's commentary on whatever road trip we're on, and it goes something like this. Wow, <laughs> truck, wow, tractor, <laughs> wow, trash truck, <laughs> wow, truck. He loves trucks, so he loves story time too, and you know, right now we're kind of working him through Car and Driver, that's his favorite periodical, that's a two-year-old. But my daughters, they love story time as well, and they love fairy tales. And since the theme of Women's Coming Night Out this year is Once Upon a Time, I thought, well, I'd go back and look at the original stories of the fairy tales we all know, and I was surprised about the way that they ended. For instance, Little Red Riding Hood. We know that story. The story goes like this. What big teeth you have. And the next line is what? Better to eat you with. And then the original story he eats her with them. <laughs> so imagine telling that story to your four-year-old just before bed. <laughs> then, Little Red Riding Hood was eaten by a ravenous wolf. <laughs> okay, nighty-night. <laughs> Sweet dreams. In fact, I went back to the original story of Cinderella, and these are the exact Last lines of the original story. So imagine saying this to a four-year-old before bed. Then the pigeons pecked out the eyes of the stepsisters. <laughs> and thus, for their wickedness and falsehood, they were punished with blindness as long as they lived. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Good night. And Snow White, I have to tell you Snow White's ending. So again, imagine telling this story. Then, 
the evil stepmother was forced to put on red hot shoes and dance until she dropped down dead. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Where are the happy endings? I remember the happy endings. We, we love happy endings, don't we? We love happily ever afters. But sometimes we don't get our happily ever after. We don't get our happy ending. Last week, my family and I were on vacation, and we thought maybe we'd close out our week of vacation with uh, just a really good dinner. We thought that would be a really good ending to our time away. And so we, you know, we, we were in this nice restaurant, tablecloths, cloth napkins, more than one fork. I mean, it's really classy, <laughs> highbrow place. Actually, uh, it took uh, six months to get a reservation. It was, it was a nice place, packed, full of people. We were having dinner there together. It was a nice night. Hannah, she was a little sleepy. And so uh, she was in her chair. In, fa in fact, she fell asleep in her chair. And then towards the end of the dinner, Shelly went to go wake her up. And to our surprise, uh, she emptied the contents of her stomach all over the table. <laughs> At which point I said, uh, check, please. Uh, we're going to have a little cleanup here. Maybe a little extra tip. Thanks. Sometimes we don't have our happily ever after, our happy endings. And it may be possible that for some of you ladies here tonight, that's true for you, and it goes way beyond a spoiled dinner. There may be some of you here tonight that you've been sort of longing for your happily ever after, for your marriage, or for some health concerns, or for a financial issue, or maybe for some other stress that uh, you, you've been facing in your life, and you've wondered... Will I ever get that happily ever after? Or maybe there's some of you here, you have it. You've got the happily ever after. You have a nice home and career, family. You've got it all. And you've wondered deep down inside, is this all there is? Well, as we close Women's Comedy Night out tonight, I want to leave you with one thought. In life, there are no guarantees of happiness. That is, things happening the way that we want them to. We're going to face sorrow and grief and surprises and challenges. Uh, we're going to face uh, difficult circumstances. And we'll find that uh, all the happily ever after stuff really doesn't satisfy deep down. But here's the good news. There is a deeper, more lasting, eternal joy that far exceeds any kind of happiness that we might find in this life. And it's the kind of joy that we can only find in God. And that's why we do everything we do for Women's Comedy Night Out, because we believe that there is this God who's all about laughter, all about blessing, all about hope. And uh, we, uh, we believe that it's worth celebrating and maybe even being willing to let our hair down and, uh, and wear green tights. If you might uh, notice, uh, we, we are a little different kind of church. <laughs> Just a little, not a lot different. Lots of churches have their pastors speaking it effeminately. <laughs> I was in seminary with some. No, no, I wasn't. No, we're a little different kind of church. Because we, we're a church that says, you know, it's okay just to kind of be who you are, to come as you are, because there's a loving, gracious God who will meet you right where you are and help you discover the fullness of that deep joy that he has planned for you. So I don't know where you are tonight. Maybe you're on a journey. We're all on a journey. Maybe God is saying, I want you to discover more of that in whatever circle you find yourself in, whatever sphere of life you find yourself in. And maybe it means tonight you, you, you talk to the person that invited you here or you talk to any one of us that are part of this, uh, this comedy night out and we'd love to talk to you more about it. Well, it's always a great privilege for us to host Women's Comedy Night Out. We just love blessing and uh, being sort of a refreshing moment for women in Mount Pleasant and beyond. I know uh, many of you are from all over and we, we're just, we can't consider it a high honor to have you here. 